September 12th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Isaiah chapters 40 and 41 from the Old Testament. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak kindly to Jerusalem and tell her that her time of warfare is over, that her punishment is completed, for the Lord has made her pay double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness clear a way for the Lord, construct in the desert a road for our God. Every valley must be elevated, and every mountain and hill leveled. The rough terrain will become a level plain, the rugged landscape a wide valley. The splendor of the Lord will be revealed, and all people will see it at the same time, for the Lord has decreed it. A voice says, Cry out. Another asks, What should I cry out? The first voice responds, All people are like grass, and all their promises are like the flowers in the field. The grass dries up, the flowers wither, when the wind sent by the Lord blows on them. Surely humanity is like grass. The grass dries up, the flowers wither, but the decree of our God is forever reliable. Go up on a high mountain, O herald Zion. Shout out loudly, O herald Jerusalem. Shout, don't be afraid. Say to the towns of Judah, Here is your God. Look, the Sovereign Lord comes as a victorious warrior. His military power establishes his rule. Look, his reward is with him. His prize goes before him. Like a shepherd, he tends his flock. He gathers up the lambs with his arm. He carries them close to his heart. He leads the ewes along. Who has measured out the waters in the hollow of his hand, or carefully measured the sky, or carefully weighed the soil of the earth, or weighed the mountains in a balance, or the hills on scales. Who comprehends the mind of the Lord, or gives him instructions as his counselor? From whom does he receive directions? Who teaches him the correct way to do things, or imparts knowledge to him, or instructs him in skillful design? Look, the nations are like a drop in a bucket. They are regarded as dust on the scales. He lifts the coastlands as if they were dust. Not even Lebanon could supply enough firewood for a sacrifice. Its wild animals would not provide enough burnt offerings. All the nations are insignificant before him. They are regarded as absolutely nothing. To whom can you compare God? To what image can you liken him? A craftsman casts an idol, a metalsmith overlays it with gold and forges silver chains for it. To make a contribution, one selects wood that will not rot. He then seeks a skilled craftsman to make an idol that will not fall over. Do you not know? Do you not hear? Has it not been told to you since the very beginning? Have you not understood from the time the earth's foundations were made? He is the one who sits on the earth's horizon. Its inhabitants are like grasshoppers before him. He is the one who stretches out the sky like a thin curtain and spreads it out like a pitch tent. He is the one who reduces rulers to nothing. He makes the earth's leaders insignificant. Indeed, they are barely planted. Yes, they are barely sown. Yes, they barely take root in the earth. And then he blows on them, causing them to dry up, and the wind carries them away like straw. To whom can you compare me? Whom do I resemble? Says the Holy One. Look up at the sky who created all these heavenly lights. He is the one who leads out their ranks. He calls them all by name. Because of his absolute power and awesome strength, not one of them is missing. Why do you say Jacob? Why do you say Israel? The Lord is not aware of what is happening to me. My God is not concerned with my vindication. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is an eternal God, the creator of the whole earth. He does not get tired or weary. There is no limit to his wisdom. He gives strength to those who are tired. To the ones who lack power, he gives renewed energy. Even youths get tired and weary. Even strong young men clumsily stumble. But those who wait for the Lord's help find renewed strength. They rise up as if they had eagle's wings. They run without growing weary. They walk without getting tired. Listen to me in silence, you coastlands. Let the nations find renewed strength. Let them approach and then speak. Let us come together for debate. Who stirs up this one from the east? Who officially commissions him for service? He hands nations over to him and enables him to subdue kings. He makes them like dust with his sword, like wind-blown straw with his bow. 
He pursues them and passes by unharmed. He advances with great speed. Who acts and carries out decrees? Who summons the successive generations from the beginning? I, the Lord, am present at the very beginning, and at the very end, I am the one. The coastlands see and are afraid. The whole earth trembles. They approach and come. They help one another. One says to the other, Be strong. The craftsman encourages the metalsmith. The one who wields the hammer encourages the one who pounds on the anvil. He approves the quality of the welding and nails it down so it won't fall over. You, my servant Israel, Jacob, who I have chosen, offspring of Abraham, my friend. You, who I am bringing back from the earth's extremities and have summoned from the remote regions, I told you, you are my servant. I have chosen you and not rejected you. Don't be afraid, for I am with you. Don't be frightened, for I am your God. I strengthen you. Yes, I help you. Yes, I uphold you with my saving right hand. Look, all who were angry at you will be ashamed and humiliated. Your adversaries will be reduced to nothing and perish. When you will look for your opponents, you will not find them. Your enemies will be reduced to absolutely nothing. For I am the Lord your God, the one who takes hold of your right hand, who says to you, don't be afraid. I am helping you. Don't be afraid, despised, insignificant Jacob. Men of Israel, I am helping you, says the Lord, your protector, the Holy One of Israel. Look, I am making you like a sharp threshing sledge, new and double-edged. You will thresh the mountains and crush them. You will make the hills like straw. You will winnow them and the wind will blow them away. The wind will scatter them. You will rejoice in the Lord. You will boast in the Holy One of Israel. The oppressed and the poor look for water, but there is none. Their tongues are parched from thirst. I, the Lord, will respond to their prayers. I, the God of Israel, will not abandon them. I will make streams flow down the slopes and produce springs in the middle of the valleys. I will turn the desert into a pool of water and the arid land into springs. I will make cedars, acacias, myrtles, and olive trees grow in the wilderness. I will make evergreens, firs, and cypresses grow together in the desert. I will do this so people will observe and recognize, so they will pay attention and understand that the Lord's power has accomplished this and that the Holy One of Israel has brought it into being. Present your argument, says the Lord. Produce your evidence, says Jacob's king. Let them produce evidence. Let them tell us what will happen. Tell us about your earlier predictive oracles, so that we may examine them and see how they were fulfilled, or decree for us some future events. Predict how future events will turn out so we might know you are gods. Yes, do something good or bad so we might be frightened and in awe. Look, you are nothing and your accomplishments are non-existent. The one who chooses to worship you is disgusting. I have stirred up one out of the north, and he advances, one from the eastern horizon who prays in my name. He steps on rulers as if they were clay, like a potter treading the clay. Who decreed this from the beginning so we could know? Who announced it ahead of time so we could say he's correct? Indeed, none of them decreed it. Indeed, none of them announced it. Indeed, no one heard you say anything. I first decreed to Zion, look, here's what will happen. I sent a herald to Jerusalem. I look, but there is no one. Among them there is no one who serves as an advisor, that I might ask questions and receive answers. Look, all of them are nothing. Their accomplishments are non-existent. Their metal images lack any real substance. God, today I just want to pray for everyone who feels abandoned. And I would say that's probably most of us who are listening to this video right now. Abandoned in relationships, abandoned by the world, abandoned financially, abandoned at work. There's just so many opportunities for this world to abandon us. And yet throughout these chapters, and these are some of the most powerful chapters in Isaiah, you're really clear that you are not only a sovereign God, but more importantly, you're a God that cares very deeply for us, that loves us without question, and will never leave us, never forsake us, and very much 
knows everything that's going on in our lives is right there with us. In verse uh, 26 of Isaiah chapter 40, it says, Look up at the sky who created all these heavenly lights. He is the one who leads out their ranks. He calls them all by name because of his absolute power and awesome strength. Not one of them is missing. And we know today, and I'm sure there's more, but we know that there is probably 10 billion trillion, that's a lot of zeros, 10 billion trillion stars in the galaxies that, that we know about, in the universes that we know about. 10 billion trillion stars, and you call every single one by name. And not a single one doesn't know to come out at night. You control 10 billion trillion. And what is amazing to me is it's not so much that you control those gorgeous stars we see at nighttime and they're fully at your command and you're fully aware and they're completely responsive to your sovereignty. But I think the part that we always miss is that you call them by name. Here's these inanimate objects, stars, and you know every single one of them. So if we just for a second stop and realize that you created us, you created us to be in your image, you created with us with love, you created us to be masterpieces, you created us in your image. How much more important are we that, than the stars? How much more important are we than the birds and the flowers in the field? If you were going to command the stars and call them by name, 10 billion trillion stars, to think what you can do with our lives. How intimate of a relationship you want in our lives. If you're willing to take up that much time and space and work for the stars, imagine what you can do in our lives if we let you. So God, I pray for everyone who has been abandoned and hurt and feels alone in this world by all the worldly things. And there's so many things of this world that easily just suck the life out of us and make us feel incredibly lonely, incredibly sad. But we serve a God who so intricately knows every little detail of every single thing that is not only all around us, but the entire universe upon universes around us. And you come down and you say, I, I want to take you by your right hand and I want to lead you and guide you and have a relationship with you and I want you to understand how much I love you God allow them today to feel that love allow them to feel, feel that validation from you that they are important that they exist for a reason that they are loved that the world might have rejected them but you never will these are your people God Allow them to understand their significance. Allow them to understand why you intentionally created each and every single one of them. Allow their hearts to feel the joy that they are your chosen children. God, the world destroys us so much on so many levels. We request your power, your strength, your sovereignty to just flood our lives with light, with the knowledge that we are wanted, that we do belong, that we do have value. And most importantly, that we are loved by our creator. In your son's name I pray, amen.